When I was starting my career, there were basically only three ways that you could earn a living with your language skills. You could be a teacher, a translator, or an interpreter. But the world has moved on a lot since then, and thanks to the internet, there are now some very, very exciting ways that you can use your foreign language skills to make a bit of money on the side, or even wholesale change into a brand new career. And I'm going to tell you about 11 of those ways in this video, including something to do with this hoodie. First up, one of the most exciting opportunities right now for people who want to work with languages is to work for small to medium sized language learning companies like Story Learning. You've got on the one hand, huge companies like a Rosetta Stone, for example, that everyone's familiar with. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you've got kind of individual influencers who may be a one man band. But there are lots of companies like Story Learning that work within the language learning field who really need great people. And I was thinking about the variety of people and roles that we have within the company. And so, for example, we have Lisa, who works on the YouTube team, who does research into languages and script writing for me. Then we have Stefano, who speaks a whole bunch of languages and is in the course area uh, in like, different courses, answering student questions and things like that. And then Dave on the customer support team who's interacting with customers from all around the world using his language skills for that. And, and there's a whole bunch of other examples like this as well. And this is great because you know small businesses like Story Learning need good people who are, who are passionate and like to take responsibility. It's an opportunity for you to work directly within your area of interest. And I was thinking that at least 50% of the people who I've hired in the last few years for Story Learning at some point reached out to me directly and said, hey, Ollie, I'm really good at this one thing. Do you need any help in this area? And often we have a conversation and I end up hiring them. So my, my advice to you is if you're into languages or a language and you've got a specific skill set and there's a company out there that you like, get in touch, reach out because you never know where that might end up. Now, writing a book to most people feels absolutely impossible. You know, how can I possibly, who am I to write a book? But hear me out on this one because it was only a few years ago, not that long ago that I was sitting at my kitchen table typing away in a Word document for the first draft of a crazy idea that I had, which was a book of short stories in Spanish. That was the first language. And it was the definition of a, of a kind of quick experiment. I had no idea what was gonna happen. The book ended up doing quite well. We extended the series into new languages and then that got picked up by, uh, by Hachette, one of the biggest publishers in the world. Then we worked together Together to turn my original books here into the new series, which is this, and then this became one of the most successful language learning lines in the world. The point is that these things happen, these are not just myths, and I was an absolute nobody at the time. Some people would say, I still am. So these things are all totally possible. My advice here is that, you know, see, most people think, well, if I just get a publishing contract, then I'll be set, then I can write the book. But actually, it's much better to start by self publishing your, your idea, whatever it is. Because not only will you make more money by self-publishing it, but you also get to prove the concept. And then you're much more likely then to get a publishing contract afterwards once you've demonstrated that the thing that you've created, that you self-published, is actually viable. That's exactly what happened um, with, with these books, like the short stories I've written because they were doing well. That was why the publishers came along and said, hey, uh, you know, what have you got going on here? Can we partner up? So it's very important to start with self-publishing, in my opinion, but also to actually learn how to do it. Don't just kind of to start typing and then try and publish. Take courses on how to self-publish because the knowledge that you'll get there is really, really important. It's gonna teach you how to actually get distribution for the thing that you write. In the end of the day, uh, that's the biggest challenge is getting people to actually read it. But you can learn how to do all this stuff. In terms of what you can write, there's so many options here. There is a learning material, guides, um, content, actually like, you know, my, like my short stories, textbooks, it really is whatever you can think of. My friend Joe at the moment is writing a book which is about language journaling. The publishing industry, in my opinion, is absolutely ripe for disruption. It's still very traditional and there's lots of things that you can do if you've got new ideas. And I think that's essentially what I did with my books of short stories, is bringing something new to the market. I actually created a, a masterclass on how to self-publish, how to publish language books, which is free to uh, any, any buyers of my books, actually. If you're interested in that, make sure you're on my newsletter because we send out emails about that from time to time. Materials writing is a very interesting opportunity for people with uh, some significant expertise in the language. Maybe you're a, a teacher or a translator. You know, back in the day, the only options you'd have here were really to kind of work with big publishers. But now with the amount of content being produced for language learners, there are so many opportunities, whether they be, uh, you know, apps who need to make their own appy things or companies like Story Learning that need help from writers or materials designers through to companies like Teach Yourself. In the video I made with, with Sarah, the publishing director of Teach Yourself uh, recently, you know, she said that even these big publishers like Teach Yourself rely on expert freelancers for help with anything from kind of copy editing to translating to materials design. So if you are that person, know that there are many companies out there that need your help and would love to have you on their team. Again, the advice here is the same. Reach out and let them know that you're available. 
Creating online content and building an audience, I think it's the major opportunity that has come about of, as a result of the internet being a thing for people who are that way inclined. Now, why on earth would you want to create online content? Well, here's why. Anyone that you follow online in the realm of language learning is going to be doing essentially this same thing, which is creating content on a topic that they are interested in. It could be teaching French, it could be talking about stories with language learning, and then building an audience of other people who are also interested in that same thing. So you've got topic, and you've got an audience who like that topic. You can do this in lots of different ways. You can have a podcast, you can create a YouTube channel, you can write a blog, which is how I got my start. You know, I wasn't, I'm not really, I don't really consider myself a YouTuber. I started off with blogging and then started doing YouTube later. Once you have this audience of people who are following what you do, well, this becomes the, the seed of an actual business and it can be earning a little bit of extra money or it can actually be the foundation for a very big company, in fact. But it works like this. When you have an audience of people that follow you, that is the equivalent of advertising. You know, a lot of big companies spend millions of dollars to advertise, you know, billboards, TV ads, whatever, to get in front of people. You building an audience is essentially that same thing done through different means. And you can monetize through different ways. You can have direct support. People support you on Patreon, for example. You can do sponsored ads. You can offer services that you might want to do, like coaching, language coaching, for example, or even create your own courses. Now, YouTube is interesting because YouTube kind of gives uh, the added bonus of actually paying you um, ad revenue. Those really annoying ads that you see everywhere when you're trying to watch YouTube, well, that does serve a purpose. It is supporting creators like me who are actually making content out there. Shout out here to Creator Smarts if you want to learn to actually build a significant, serious YouTube channel. Creator Smarts uh, is a, uh, a channel that I'm involved in where we talk about that stuff. The point here is, in case you're wondering why this actually matters, your experience as an individual is valuable. And this is one of the things that have really become really good about the internet revolution. It's not just big companies and big newspapers calling the shots anymore. In individuals like you and me can actually have a voice and this is relevant to people. This really matters to people. So don't think that whatever you want to talk about is insignificant because it's really, really not. If you're passionate about something, other people will be too. I mean, take the my case, talk about stories. It's really simple, it's nothing special, but people really like that and it's something that no one else was really providing. So this provides the kind of foundation for me to do what I do. So my advice here is to pick a medium that suits you, if you like talking, do a podcast. If you like video, try YouTube. If you like writing, have a blog. It doesn't matter. Any kind of platform really works. And then just start making weekly content. I started one day randomly uh, in a cafe in the Middle East, uh, just because I read this book. And I just started writing my blog posts. I didn't think too much about it. I just started. So pick the medium that's most comfortable for you. Commit to making weekly content about that language. And then take a course to learn about the medium you've chosen. So if you decided to do a podcast, take a podcasting course. Trust me, from experience, that will save you absolutely years of building that platform. In the last section, we talked about how the individual matters so much more in the online economy. People like to learn from people. So that is why I think language coaching is becoming so much more popular. Language coaching is simply saying, look, it's not about teaching you the language, but I'm gonna coach you through the same process that I went through when I learned my whatever language. And this is important because, you know, again, in the old days, it was the publishers that had all the power. If you wanted to learn French, the only thing you could really do was either hire a teacher or buy a book. Now there's a million different things you can do. And one of those things is language teaching. And this is popular, I think, because people like to talk about the stuff that they've done. And a lot of people that I see getting their start in the online world start with language coaching, because honestly, it is fun. And there's two main ways that you can go about doing this. First of all, and the best kind of long-term option is to actually start to build your own content and audience like we talked about in the previous section, because once you've built that audience, then you can offer things like language coaching to the people who follow you. But secondly, you can reach out to companies who you see offering language coaching. There's you know companies like Story Learning, for example, or my friends at Fluent Forever who have these big uh, language boot camps and need coaches and offer your services. If you've got experience in this area, you think you're really good at it and you're passionate about it. Again, companies want to hear from people like you, so reach out and let them know. It's easier than you might think. Now, what happens if you're watching this so far and thinking, well, Ollie, this is all very well, but I'm no expert. I'm only just learning my first foreign language and I'm not even very good at that either. What can I do? Well, let me tell you one thing that you are an expert in, and that is your native language. Let's assume that it's English. I know it may not be, but it's gonna make it easier to explain this next section. Your natural knowledge of English is an incredibly valuable resource. There are two billion people in the world learning English right now. And for many of those people, well, the vast majority of people will never be able to pay for English practice. There are many people who can and want to because it simply saves them time. Think of the last time you did a language exchange where you spent, say, half an hour speaking English, half an hour speaking the other person's language. You don't think it's that valuable because it's free, 
but actually that's a very, very valuable half hour for that person. And many people would be in a position where they would prefer to actually pay for that practice because it just saves them time. Think about, for example, someone I met recently, a guy in Germany who is an engineer. He needs to improve his English in order to get that big promotion for a job in the US. He doesn't necessarily need to learn any more grammar. He just needs to practice speaking. So he was asking me, wait, you know, where can I find someone where I can just practice speaking English, you know, multiple times a week. Well, you as a native English speaker, again, assuming that's your language, are in a position where you can offer this expertise. You don't necessarily need to be able to explain grammar or anything like that. You just need to be available and to help that person learn and just to take an interest, a human interest in that person. And so with the combination of that plus the internet, where you can now connect with people online. This makes it possible to create a, a full-time tutoring business from home where you can connect with people around the world and just help them to practice their English. If you are a trained teacher, fantastic. If you're not, doesn't matter. People are looking for different things. So this is one of the best opportunities for people, whether you want to make like a little bit of extra income or even turn it into a full-time business. I teach a class called the Online Teaching Accelerator, where I teach people to do exactly this, is to take their knowledge of their native language and to turn it into a home business where they are tutoring people around the world. And it really is a wonderful thing. There's a lot of good for the world. If you'd like more information about that, we're closed currently, but we'll open up again soon. There's a link in the description where you can sign up to the waiting list. With the explosion of online content, and video in particular is becoming so much faster, streaming services, all of this, there is a huge need for content to be subtitled, translated, even dubbed into other languages. This is something that you do need specific language expertise for, or at least a kind of combination of languages where this becomes possible. But if you think about everything from Netflix on the one hand to university courses, MOOCs on the other hand, you've got YouTubers who want to make their content available in other languages, online courses, you name it, people are making it available in other languages so that people around the world can get access to it. So if you have uh, an interest in this or you have the competence, then there is lots and lots of work that you can do. And it can be anything from like doing it kind of just in the evening or weekends to doing this full time. So it's a great kind of freelancer type job. To find this kind of work, go onto job boards that specialize in freelancer work. So you've got Upwork on the, one, on the other hand, you've got Angel List on the other. You can just start to Google startup jobs, translation, startup jobs, subtitling, things like this. And you'll find a huge array of of things that you can start to actually do. And it's a great way to put your language skills into good practice. Now here's one that you weren't expecting, but I think could be really, really cool for the right people. And this is the idea of running immersion experiences in another country. Now this depends to a large extent on where you are, the places that you have access to, people that you might know. But if you think of the idea of taking a group of people to a special location and giving them a cultural experience, this is something that's incredibly useful for people and a lot of people would pay very good money to have access to. I'm thinking, for example, some of the places I've been over the years where because I've been with locals, I've been able to have a totally different experience of the, of the country. Even quite familiar places like the Canary Islands, for example, corners of islands like Tenerife, which people just never go to as tourists, but really are a re an incredible experience. You can organize things like this, give people access to the culture, to the food. You can set up language classes with local teachers. It's not something that requires any particular language expertise, just a love of people, a love of the location that you're familiar with, and, a, and a, just a desire to give people a good time. I've got a number of friends that do this. Katie over at Joy of Languages does this. The team at Spanish and Go run study abroad immersion experiences in Mexico. It's a really, really cool thing that I would really love to do if I had a slightly different angle to my business. So if this is you, this is setting off bells or ideas of some kind, it's something to think about. You can combine lots and lots of passions and don't necessarily need to have particular expertise in the language. In order to pull it off, you can think about partnering up with tourist agencies, things like that, or even reaching out to people like me. I don't want to get too many emails here, but reach out to people like me who have an audience and saying, look, I can facilitate this. I can run this. How about you mention this to your people and maybe we can work something out? I don't know, but I really like this one. This is one that I recommend you do not touch with a barge pole and steer well clear of. But I'm including it here in this list because it's something that I think many people really fantasize about. And this is the idea of creating a language learning app. I think people think about this because we've all got a smartphone, we all have apps on our phone, and we all have ideas for apps. This is something that my friend Gabe at Fluent Forever has done an incredible job for with his app. My friend Ikeno is also about to release a language app. I'm super excited for this. It can be done, but I want you to know that it is incredibly expensive, incredibly hard to execute, and most apps that people make do not succeed because it is very hard to get right from a technical perspective. There is ruthless competition with apps. And so I'm going to just come out and say that I really recommend that you don't pursue the idea of creating an app. But with that caveat in place, if you feel that you really know 
language learning. You really know more importantly the language learning market. Perhaps you can already code. Perhaps you are a developer. You can see something that you're sure is going to work. It could, in theory, be an amazing opportunity. Just really handle with care. In the past, big companies used to be very siloed in the way that they did business. You'd have the American, the New York office with the American team and the Tokyo office with the Japanese team. But now, because of the internet, everything is spread far and wide across borders, and a good thing that is too. Social media, for example, not such a good thing, but social media means that you put something out into the ether and your thing is not just gonna be seen in the language that you expect it to be, but it's also gonna be seen by people all across the world, which is a great opportunity, but it means that companies need people from different countries all with different language skills in order to manage that. And what's interesting is that a lot of companies actually outsource the social media in different languages. So you might get an American company who kind of does their own thing and then get an agency to run their social media in different languages so that if someone kind of responds from the Netherlands and they've got someone there who can reply to that person directly in Dutch. So social media work with languages is very, very interesting. And if you like that kind of thing, then it could be a very useful avenue to explore. Now I've saved the best till last. And you know, I have often thought if my whole story learning thing disappeared tomorrow, then I would do something very specific, <laughs> something very fun, I think. And that is to offer local experiences, as they're called, or like walking tours or whatever, whatever you want to think of them, in my local city. And you know how you go on a, if you ever book an Airbnb, now they give you this whole menu of local experiences that you can book. And a lot of different companies are doing this, booking.com, TripAdvisor. I would go and create a walking tour of London, and I would target it at specific uh, groups or nationalities that I wanted to spend more time with, say French or Japanese or whatever it is. So imagine like a walking tour of London in Japanese. And I'd charge, I don't know, 20 quid for it or something like that. And I would use that as a way to combine my languages with earning a little bit of money. And I really don't know whether that is a viable idea or not, but hey, have the idea for free. And you know, if you ever do that, let me know. I think it's a brilliant way of actually practicing the language, if nothing else. And if you enjoyed this video, then you'll probably like this video too, which explains why it is that the whole world pretty much speaks English.